and welcome to today's video tutorial. Uh, before we get started, go ahead and put your name down in the comments and say hello. Uh, my name is Sonia Chandler and I have a small furniture and decor business here in Nashville, Tennessee uh, called Socks on a Rooster and you can find me at uh, Gas Lamp Antiques uh, here in Nashville. So today's video tutorial uh, is going to be over a product that can be somewhat confusing and that is our craft patina. But it could not be a more user-friendly product. And I'm gonna show you how to use it to where it's foolproof and you won't have any problems with it. Uh, we're gonna use it along with some one-step paint and I'm going to be uh, refinishing these old world sconces. They already have a great look. They're just a little bit too dark for my liking. So I'm going to lighten them up. And because I wanna keep that old world texture and uh, cracked patina look, I'm going to use our cracked patina in only particular areas. I want to show you how you do not have to use it over your entire piece to achieve the look that you want. So let me get started here and I'll show you how. Okay guys, uh, so as always, I start out with clean slate. I'm cleaning these sconces from top to bottom and get those clean. Then you can start with your First coat, step one, is your one-step paint. Now I am going to mix up some paint here to create my own color. Um, this is just something I love to do. And I just, I'm mixing some Weybridge Classic, which is a really pretty bluish green, and I'm mixing in some, um, a good man is hard to find. Now, if you are someone who loves to mix up paint, and you find this enjoyable or you like to come up with your own new colors, this is, this is fun. If, the wonderful thing about Amy Howard products is there are so many beautiful colors. If you think that this type of a step is a hassle, you don't have to do that. There is a million uh, op options for you. You know, you can pick a color that would become similar to this. But for me, I have some sort of a need to mix colors before I start a project, so uh, I'm always kind of doing this. But so you know here, I'm mixing Weybridge Classic and A Good Man is Hard to Find. And I'm, I'm just going to keep mixing that until I get to that desired hue that I am envisioning, that the color that I think in my mind is what I'm wanting, you know, for the base. Now, when you do a project using Cracked Patina, you need to remember that your base color will not be your main color. Your base color that I'm painting on here first, this mix of these two, this color will only be the color that is showing through in the areas where the cracked patina will be. So it's a, it's a sandwich that we're creating. Your first base color will only be, will be the least amount of, of color that you show through. Then you'll do your cracked patina and then you'll do your top coat your top color of one step, which will be your, <clears throat> your main color. So keep that in mind when you're thinking. You have to think a little bit ahead of how this is actually going to look because it can be confusing uh, as to um, what why you're painting the entire thing a different color first. So once I reached that desired hue that I was looking for, I was looking really for like a, a deep blue steel gray color, which um, is really the color of a good man is hard to find, but I also wanted to um, have a little bit of blue in there. So my top color is going to be a light linen mix with maybe some Weybridge white. And so all you're going to do is you're going to get your base coat on your piece. And in today's kind of tutorial, I'm showing you how you only have to use cracked patina in particular areas. And you may think, well, you know, Sonia, do I want to paint the whole area? Do I just want to paint the areas that I'm going to use the cracked patina? For, uh, you know, being able to execute this in, this in the smoothest way possible and the execution of your piece coming out um, cohesive overall, you want to paint your entire piece in your base coat. It's not wasteful. This is part of why it comes out looking 
um, overall as if it, it is truly authentic, an authentic finish. So here I am just getting one coat of my uh, one step paint on. I have both of them done here. And then I'm going to, next step is your cracked patina. Now, normally, you're gonna just shake it up, put it in a container. Normally, you would paint your entire piece, and a lot of people will do that. They want the entire piece to be cracked and have that color show through. I'm only going to do some, you know, particular uh, edging here. And you can look at your piece and see where the decorative areas are or the particular lines of a piece. On, on these sconces, uh, there are, um, you know, particular borders on the edges and, you know, you've got the curls and the swirls here. I'm just going to highlight those. And what that means is when I put this cracked patina in those areas, once I do my top coat of one step, those are the only areas that are going to crack. So the areas that I do not have this cracked patina are going to be com completely smooth. There'll be, there'll be no cracking and there'll be none of that blue that shows through, which is exactly what I'm wanting to do for this piece. And this is a good practice when you're trying to learn how to use the cracked patina because it can be a little overwhelming if you're doing an entire piece. The best way to do it when you're doing your entire um, an entire nightstand or dresser, you need to work in sections uh, because uh, your cracked patina will work right away. So here I am getting it on both pieces. Now my cracked patina here is dry and you can see that it's still shiny, but it is completely dry. Um, cracked patina will dry, shiny, has a high gloss to it, as you can see there, but there's nothing that's wet here. So uh, over here, I have mixed my top color, which is a mix of One Step Linen and One Step uh, in Weybridge Classic. So I've used both Weybridges here. I used Weybridge Classic, and then I've used, uh, actually, I'm sorry, this is Weybridge White. We have two Weybridges. So I have mixed a color here where I've made my linen a little bit lighter with the Weybridge White. Now you'll need some baby wipes there because as you put this on over your cracked patina, and here I am, you'll see I'm just working in a small section here. I'm just gonna go up this sconce in, in almost little block sections. And the reason why is because as soon as you put your one step over that cracked patina, uh, this, this product is a reaction product, okay? It's gonna react right away, almost immediately, as soon as that one step paint uh, goes over that cracked patina, it's going to start to crack. And you can't continue to go over it. You, you need to let it do its job. So when it starts reacting almost immediately, you need to let it do its job. So I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna make sure I have and you can see, I don't know if you can see it on the camera there, it is already cracking. And I just brushed that less than a minute ago. And it is cracking in the areas because there is a chemical component in that that will cause a reaction. So I'm going to get some of my wet wipes because I feel like my best tool when I'm using cracked patina are my hands. You can use a paintbrush and different things, but you're gonna, you're gonna touch those cracked areas and what will happen is it will allow you to pull away that top coat in linen and Cambridge white. Okay, so, and you can start to see my color underneath of Weybridge Classic and Good Man is Hard to Find. So you, you can see there it's pulling away and I just wanted these edges to show some of that, that gray color underneath and that's what it's going to do. Um, but as your hands get the paint on them, you'll want to wipe them away, uh, wipe away that paint. As you can see, you can use the back of your hands, um, you know, the, the ball of your hands, your fingers, and where that cracked patina has started to split that top coat of one step, that's where you're able to pull it off. 
And as you lift that paint with your fingers, uh, you will start to see that it, it, it's, you know, antiquing it and giving it an old world finish. Now, your hands uh, need to be dry. If you use a wet wipe and they're wet and you try to touch it, it's, it's not gonna, the paint won't stick to your wet hands. So make sure your hands are dry. You can use a paper towel to dry them after the baby wipe. But you just want to let them be dry so that as you press down, you can see I'm pulling away uh, the, the cracked patina areas. And that's exactly what I want it to do. I'm wanting to look very old and weathered like maybe these sconces have been outside for a long period of time and their uh, finish has worn away. But you can see there, my color is showing through, except for in the areas I didn't paint the cracked patina. So now I'm gonna work my way up the sconce. And I think this is the number one thing I see people ask questions about or have a problem with, is that um, they start to paint their paint over the cracked patina and it starts to crack immediately and it goes too fast for them to be able to uh, do the pulling away technique. So that is why we only do a small section at a time, maybe two or three, four inches. Because again, as soon as you paint your top coat on, it's going to react. That cracked patina will react to that paint and it will immediately, as it starts, the air hits it, it will start to crack. And that's good, you want that to do that, but you want to be able to lay your paintbrush down and start to pull away that paint. So it's important that you go uh, very slow, or not necessarily slow, but that you go in sections. And you can, you'll be able to feather all that in, it will all blend, it won't look as if you've had sections. You just want to get your coat on and avoid going over the same area twice over your cracked patina because as soon as it cracks, it starts to pull away. So as you can see, I did the bottom there and I've pulled away paint. Now this is all covered, but it's cracking in the areas I want it to. And now I'm going to pull away uh, more of that so I can see the gray underneath. And this is how you use cracked patina. Uh, it in sections slowly and you use your hands to pull that away. You can even use a rag, a dry rag, to kind of pull some of that away if you don't want to use your hands. See how I'm doing there? You can do that. It doesn't pull away quite as well, and you, you don't want it to smear. You just want to pull it upwards to pull that, that linen light color off of your blue. But this is how it's done and it creates a beautiful finish, very authentic uh, in terms of aging or looking very old, um, an old world. These sconces are also, they're a, a heavy plaster and they're a reproduction of an antique sconce. So they already have the style. Um, so I just wanted to give them a finish that made them look even more old and rustic. And that's what the cracked patina does perfectly. So you wanna use the cracked patina on the right items. And sometimes uh, if you have too big or broad of an area, you know, you need to make sure you go in small sections so that you don't, uh, you don't have too much to pull away all at once. So here I am, as you can see, I'm working my way up, this, up the sconce. If you were doing a tabletop, or a dresser, this is what you would do as well. You're only going to do a small area and, and pull away the paint and then continue on. Uh, it just, it will react and dry too quickly if you try to do the entire thing. So again, there's a lot of artistic element to this process as well because you're going along and looking at where you wanna pull this paint away and you're trying to see, oh yeah, I wanna pull a little bit away here. I need some more gray to show through uh, in this area. And you know, your eye will tell you, you know, learn to trust your eye that that looks good to me, or you know, I want a little more gray there, or I wanna leave that area a little bit more white. Um, that's part of learning and honing that skill of execution, of pulling off these finishes 
um, that you will love, that you're happy with when you look at them in your home and you're happy with that, that outcome. So as you can see here, I will end up um, kind of turning the piece and looking at it as if I was going to be using it in my home right there. I'm looking, oh yes, I want to pull some other parts away from here. And, you know, it's, it's a balance. You want to be able to use that product, that crack patina to your advantage. Where do I want this to pull away? And, you know, where do I want um, it to be a little bit more white? But as you can see, it looks amazingly uh, cool and interesting. And I love this product for this reason, because it can give you a very aged and antique look very quickly. Now here are my sconces finished and I'm unable to hang them up at the moment because we are actually moving and I, I can't put anything on the walls right now. So um, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments and I'll get back to you and answer uh, them. But I do highly encourage you to try the Cracked Patina. It's a wonderful product and it creates a finish like no other. So thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you give this a try and I hope you have a great day.